Carter in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. On third and one, here's Rivers to Gordon out left. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you're doing across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Joey Bosa has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He's going deep for Brown, and that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Now Benjamin. the field here comes Los Angeles they have the lead obviously late in the game I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake a field goal does the opposition no good everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion and that helps you immeasurably but the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game don't even let that become an issue yeah but still a one possession game this one not fully over yet all right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Left side. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Now that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. 
everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see it back. Just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Joey Bosa in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now Carr. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Carr. He's got Wilson, middle of the field. He's at the 40. Pass the 20. And he'll be taken down deep into Charger territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. To throw its call. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Desmond King picks it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback. But as a receiver, you've got to understand where you are in the field. Middle portion, you know it's going to come in hot. Square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch. They go play action here on first down. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. 25 yards there on the catch and run. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. Now the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it up field, and that brings up second down. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. To throw again, Rivers. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Give him six on the play, and it'll be third down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. This is Gordon, and that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. On is the Chargers punter now as he's on here to punt it away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. So Carr and the Raiders now, down by seven. A little under a minute, 50 remaining. And they're in danger of a third straight loss as they come up on first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. They lift to throw. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Clock running here under 90 seconds to go. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Back to throw. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. He's back to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 
And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. From midfield, here's Carr. And it's caught over the middle. Wilson. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. He'll look to throw. This will be caught inside the 10. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. And a timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining. First down. First and goal at the 6-yard line. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Across and in for the score. And now they can tie the game in the final stages with the extra point. Or they can go for two and go for the win. And that touchdown means a decision has to be made. Do they kick the PAT and tie it up? Or do they go for two and try and win it right now? So now this will be in all likelihood to force overtime. And here come the whistles at a timeout with seven seconds left. And now the decision is to go for two. A gutsy call, and this, in effect, is your ball game right here. Back to throw, Carr. And he's going to get in for the two points. It was an incredibly gutsy call, but they've taken the lead by a point late in the game. And boy, you want to talk about guts. Guts is going for two when you're down one in that spot right there. Do they not trust their kicker? Did they not feel that it was time to go ahead and do that? Or did they just say, we've got a play on that we're so confident in, we're going to go ahead and do it? I'm going to say they're going to say that in the press conference. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. Hey, we gotta get to the ball, G. We gotta get Rivers. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. One last shot now for Rivers. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for the Raiders, the win gets them back over 500 at five and four on the year. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week. Meanwhile, for our visitors, they come back to the pack a bit as their record falls to seven and three. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.